Colorado. How you guys doing? Huh? Colorado Hello. That's right. Thank you, Travis. Say it to everybody. That's right. So weird. Say Ned. How about that, huh? Is that right? What was the final score? Oh, it was? Yeah, they won big. Kept it in Northeast Ohio, though, right, D? That's right. That's all that matters. Uh, well, I'll tell you about the Damon Stringer uh, documentary later. Oh, there we go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, hey, the big, you all were able to run the ball. We got a hundred second game in a row. And now I guess the goal is to blend that together. Sure. Get it, get it, get it going here against yeah, I think, you know, again, sitting up here and talking about the different things offensively, at the end of the day, regardless of how you do it, you know, you need to score points. Um, so, you know, having the ability to go and uh, take advantage of certain situations. Um, when you're down in the red area, making sure you convert those four-point plays. You don't want to kick field goals. You want to score touchdowns. Um, and then from that situation, again, you know, running the football is important. Uh, it's a mindset. It's a mentality. Uh, you know, I think every team in the NFL wants to go out there and, and establish the run or at least run it well or productively. Uh, no different than us. Um, complimentary into the pass game. And so teams just can't make us one dimensional. But again, it goes down to making sure that we have the ability to go out and score points, which ultimately is the ultimate goal. Yeah, Coach talked to us about inside, outside zone. We're familiar with that. And then a, a pin and pull play. And, and I didn't go Google that to see what that was. Uh, can right. you help us out there? You know, D, I can't go schematics. <laughs> Right, it's uh. That's like the wishbone. All right. Know, off the left, off the right. Take, take it with you right there. The uh, again, it's just different ways to attack the defense. Um, inside, outside, from the perimeter standpoint, um, attacking certain leverages, uh, techniques, um, and what we feel our guys are, are best able to do, um, and giving them the best chance pre and post snap to be successful. Yeah, there you go, D. I mean, Russ, you know, for the whole year, um, you know, obviously he missed some time. You come back from a lower body injury as a wide receiver, everybody comes back differently. Um, from that standpoint, just your conditioning, your timing with the quarterback. And then again, you know, opportunity and the ability to make the play when it's there or if the coverage dictates the ball goes to you. And so there's, there's been instances where uh, you call certain plays, certain concepts, Coverage takes it away. Certain guys get the ball. Number one in the progression might not have gotten the ball. Um, the reality is, at each position in the skill standpoint, backs, tight ends, and, and receivers, uh, regardless if you're one or you're not one in the progression, uh, being where you're supposed to be in the timing of the play. And that's the one thing we kind of harp with the quarterback, with the wide receivers, and everybody else in the skills, is understanding the timing of the quarterback and where you're supposed to be and why you're supposed to be there. And so hopefully that all kind of synchronizes and guys where they're supposed to be, uh, the protection, the quarterback's drop is right and his eyes are right and the ball comes out on time. Uh, do you feel like Matt's been getting the ball out on time or not the last month? Yeah, I mean, I think from the standpoint of you always go back in certain pass concepts overall, if it's play action, if it's drop back, if it's quick game, if it's screens, and you want to first check out, you know, make sure that the design of the scheme gave the players at least an advantage schematically to the point where there's somewhere to go with the ball. Sometimes, right, you, you kind of obviously there's – they game plan as well. They might give you something that they haven't shown on film. You hope the quarterback and the wide receivers go back to their foundation and rules. Um, but, again, you look at each play in its own entity, and you go back and there's the timing, the spacing, and the trust in the pass game. Make sure that's all there from the skill position standpoint making sure we're correctly right in who we're protecting and what guy we're going to. Um, and then from that standpoint, making sure the ball comes out when it's supposed to come out. And sometimes, there's a, as everybody's watching the NFL or even college football, there's extended plays. You know, sometimes, at the end of the day, the, the defense wins in a certain position. The quarterback has to move. It eliminates half the field because he moves right or left. And then obviously, it comes into the fact of how well can you extend the play. And that just doesn't mean take off and run. It's the receivers being able to move with you finding soft spots or winning versus man when you have to move. Um, and stuff that we obviously are, are wanting from every one of our guys from a production standpoint. Well, Coach, you talk about, just going back to what you are saying about 
spacing and timing and just kind of being where you're supposed to be. You kind of look back last week at maybe with Tajay Sharp or Kyle Pitts, kind of those drops early and even maybe Russ's fumble. Can you get a little bit more specific, not scheming wise, but mm -hmm. just how do you get those guys to maybe minimize those self-inflicted wounds or kind of what's the philosophy then this week on focusing on that? Yeah, sure. I think it goes for every position, right? In the National Football League, in my opinion, since I've been in it as a player or coach, uh, you look at each game, and the reality is, obviously, who you're playing against are talented people. The reality is, more times than not, you're probably causing your own issues at times. Either they're pre-snap penalties, uh, post-snap, you're, for whatever reason, not doing fundamentally what you ask them to do, or the guy across from you sometimes just wins. The reality is, you try to minimize the the ability to not beat yourself pre-snap and then when the ball snapped. You watch on Sundays and you could argue that more teams lose on Sundays than win. I know if you just think about it that way, teams go out and the defense is exactly what you thought they were gonna do and then you make unforced errors. Um, and then you go back and you watch a tape as a coach and a player and you self-evaluate what you could do differently. And there's always obviously after wins or losses, you always evaluate things you could do differently and things that you did well. Um, but you do, I mean, from training camp to OTAs all the way into the season, you try not to beat yourself, right? You try to stay, and I think it all goes back to your fundamentals. If you're fundamentally sound, you believe in your technique, you use it under pressure, um, more times than not, I think you'll be successful. Well, at least that's what I found when you watch this game uh, for the course of how many years. How often this year do you think you all beat yourselves? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I don't look at it in terms of the total. I look at each play. So I say, all right, in any given play, did as coaches, did we provide the players the best opportunity to be successful? And then from a player standpoint, each position, uh, did you do what you were coached to do? Or did we give you the tools, if they gave you something different, to get yourself into the right situation? You know, and that's play by play. So you go through it, and I, I look at each play, like I said before, it's his own entity. And you look at what you could have done different, what you would have stayed and done the same, and how can you help your player next time? Because I've, I've felt this for as long as I've been privileged enough to be in this league, is that as a coach, your best tool you can give the player is the ability to help them. And when a player thinks you can help them, uh, regardless of if you've ever played that position or never played that position, doesn't matter. If you can help that player become a better player um, and you can prove it time after time, then that you, you've gained that trust with that player. So it's constantly reevaluating are we making sure as coaches that we're doing a good enough job to help our players um, through scheme or fundamentals? When it comes to the production of the run game that we've seen over the last two games, how much do you kind of think about the uptick is a byproduct of this unit being more comfortable in the concepts that y'all have put in and how it's kind of taken time to get to this point? How do you kind of look at it that way? Yeah. How do you look at it that way? Yeah, I think for me it, it just – it goes back to the fact of what I've, you know, what I've said in previous press conferences about you go out there pre-practice and you watch the individuals. You watch the fundamentals we're going through. That's just not the backs or the, or the tight ends or the, the wide receivers or the old linemen. It's everybody in sync. And it takes all 11. And they've constantly stayed true to the commitment of, of working their fundamentals. And to me, through the course of time, guys believe in what they're doing, consistently staying with it. Um, you know, you, you, you do believe you'll get production. Um, and to me, you saw guys, players with an individual commitment and a unit commitment to continue to work their fundamentals and become a, a closer unit by doing so. And then hopefully you get the production and hopefully we continue to, to do what we're doing. I've kind of been thinking about the, the idea of playing a complete game and, and kind of that being the goal of what you want to get to. And I was just kind of curious, and I'm asking every coordinator this, but from for your unit specifically, what does a complete game look like maybe from a 5,000 foot view? Yeah, for me, it, to me, it goes back to the, what you want it to look like when you put the film on. So it's about the speed in which you come off the ball for all positions. It's about watching your guys play confident, knowing what their assignment is, and, and obviously executing it. Again, plays, Scoring, obviously, is what you want to do as an offense. But I'm just saying, stylistically, when you put the film on and you watch it, you want, to, you want your offense or whatever unit you're working with to represent the core beliefs of what you want the players to, to look like. And to me, 
It's the speed off the ball. It's the confidence in running. It's being physical with the ball in your hands. Um, and it's applying pressure to the defense by doing those things. So again, that's a goal each day. Um, it's not just something you wish or hope to have happen. You obviously have to, to preach it. Um, and it's a daily thing. So as we continue to move forward through this season, it's today we'll, we'll ask the players the exact same thing. Come off the ball. Like, understand your assignments. Play confident, play physical, play fast. Arthur is very dedicated, and, and you as well, to not discuss skiing. I'm not, not going not gonna to talk about anything that even bumps up against I got you. <laughs> That's been clear. I got you. Is that, has that been your mantra your whole career? Did, did you get some of that from him? Where does he fall? Yeah, I don't. Sure, I don't think I've ever coached for a head coach um, who, where that has not been the policy. Yeah. Um, again, right, I understand you could put the film on, you can see what guys are doing. The reality is um, you want to, you don't want to give any potential advantage to your opponent, um, in my opinion. So you keep things in terms of close to the best. Um, you want to make sure that the, your players understand the importance of that. Um, but again, I just don't think, from my standpoint, from the scheme to how players play, I always think the importance at this level, scheme's important. When I, there's no doubt about it. But how your guys play is just as important. And to me, that's why I always go back to how you want them, how, when you put that film on, is it what you want it to look like? And so scheme, to me, like, you know, there's a, I don't know if anybody's reinvented a play or invented a play in 2021 that hasn't been done over the course of whatever years. Maybe people haven't seen it because it happened 40 years ago, but the reality is there are probably a lot of smart people who've coached and played in this thing for a long period of time. They've definitely, uh, they've definitely figured some things out. It just, you might see a different wrinkle of it in 2021 that happened in 1981. Is Arthur's policy on that, is, is that a spoken, does he say, all right, we're not going to do this, or do you just understand? We're not yeah, I don't, I don't think I need to have him tell me at the end of the day, I think, you know, scheme is obviously, we hold it dear. Uh, it's important to us. Uh, so we just don't, dis I just don't discuss. I don't want to speak for him, but I don't discuss it. I'm sorry? You ever watch that Manning cast? You know, I have not. I have family members and friends who do. And they, uh, I, and I, I've heard it's awesome. Well, Peyton said something one time yeah. about a reporter or somebody asked Tony Dungy, how would you defend Peyton Manning? And Peyton was incredulous because he said, Tony just told him. He just laid it out there. Said, oh, is that right? Yeah, sure. No, I had no. I, that, well, yeah, I'm sure. That the that as much as I know of Peyton, I'm sure that wasn't probably what he wanted to have happen out there in terms of uh, how to defend him. But again, the top whatever player of all time. Not sure anybody really defended him the way he played. But uh, um, yeah, that that's part of the reason, right? You go out there, you don't want to give anybody any inkling or an idea or a spark. Oh, maybe we should. You know, you just want to you want to be able to go into Sunday with uh, them having no particular advantage in that. Did you ever learn anything from an opponent's first time? Played the fifth on that. <laughs> you know, you try to gather as much information as possible. You also understand that, uh, you know, you have to sometimes read in between the lines. And, you know, again, the games are so close mostly, right? Come down to fourth quarter situations at the end of games. You know, you try to you try to gain any advantage legally that you can, and um, but yeah, I mean anything you can get, you you try to use to your advantage. And sometimes you got to pilfer through all the information. Sometimes there's nothing. Have you ever tried to plan a, fla a false flag? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. But I was in, in I shouldn't name where I was at, but before the pros, I was uh, a player, and uh, we'd have guys trying to go through garbage cans and stuff like that to find things and. And to me, I'm like, as a player, you're like, that sounds great in theory, but like, snap the ball. Like, I got three seconds to make a decision. What you told me 10 minutes ago about what they may do is probably not going to enter into my thought process with less than three seconds to throw a ball. You know we know where you went to college, right? Yeah, it could be before that. It could be before that. We know where you went to high school. Yeah. <laughs> grade school. We're in grade school. Right? I, I, I'm getting into the whole, like, you know, there's no play that's ever. Do you sit there and sometimes design, even though you're not? Like, well, do you sit there and sometimes design plays and be like, I wonder if anyone's ever tried this. I wonder if they, like, do you I have don't, like a, a sketchbook and notebook where you do that? Sure, absolutely. I mean, I think any, you have any coach that goes through the course of offense or defense and, you know, you think you have a light bulb moment. I will say this. Like, I, I think I'm smart enough to understand that I, anything I think that's original is not original. 
there might be a wrinkle to, hey, I haven't seen this on film yet. The reality is I probably haven't watched all the film possible to see that. To me, it's you, when you think about scheme, obviously you, you have players and you try to fit it to, to their best ability. But the reality is from a play standpoint, I think it would be hard. I think D covering league as long as you have, I think it's hard to find a play that no one's seen before in the National Football League. Back to something Tori was asking about earlier in terms of the run game, just looking at activating uh, Kyrie Allison for uh, the New England game as well as last week. Sort of what was the thought process behind him? And if he gets going this Sunday, what do you see that he'll bring to the table, whether that's from actually running, blocking, just? Sure. Sort of I think it comes down to, and I think you can look at the backs. I think you can look at other positions. It comes down to competition. Um, that's the great thing about you know being part of this, this organization is competition matters. Um, and it matters on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It matters on Saturday in meetings, walkthroughs, everything, you know, we film things, we watch things as a staff. Um, everything's important. Everything matters. So at the end of the day, regardless of if it's a particular person or a group, um, you know, you're always competing. You're always going out there and you're trying to bring out your best. And the person who's competing with you is trying to bring out their best. And hopefully it brings out the best in both of you. So Did you see anything specific in maybe last week's game that you liked about what you did? Or? Uh, Q to me, you know, from a standpoint of a player, is comes to work, he's professional. Um, he knows his assignment. Um, and just like a lot of guys, right, you have to be ready. You never know when your opportunity could arise. Um, and again, you anybody that we feel that we dress, specific on offense, we have confidence in, regardless if it's the same person week in, week out, or it's a new person coming in, and it's no different for Q. Just one more question on Hayden Hurst, obviously coming back from IR, if he's a go on Sunday, especially when you look at him having 20 catches on just 25 targets and you know, just how good he is on third down. How, how good will that be? How important will it be for you guys and particularly Matt to have that, that other weapon? Sure. Yeah. And we'll see where, again, I'm not going to get into where Hayden is in terms of yes or no, but just obviously there's, there's um, history with Hayden and Matt been together here. Um, you know, Hayden will come in like he has with a professional mindset, know what he needs to do, be where he's supposed to be. And then you know, if he's up, um, we expect the same thing from that situation. You didn't come down just, we didn't ask about Kyle Pitts and uh, well, you didn't ask about someone else, though. I mean, you're saving it for Dean. Yeah. I, no, I got you, I got you, I got you. But I was just on Kyle because I counted the 16 to 32. Um, if you count if you, you know, pro football records. Uh, since last week, Stephon Gilmore, which I think it is. Um, you know, what, uh, what's going on there? How do y'all try to get him going? Uh, and, and, you know, the, the Stephon Gilmore, is he still playing at a high level? Yeah, I mean, I think you look, again, you see where they're ranked statistically defensively. Um, he's obviously a very good player. Um, and he's just one of many on that defense. And, again, we talk about, you know, stylistically, Carolina's defense plays fast. Mm -hmm. They've got they can apply pressure from all different, not just the front, but the backers and the in the back end. Um, they play aggressive. They understand. You can tell they're well coached. Um, my former teammates, the back end secondary coach, I, you know, I, he was a smart player. It doesn't surprise me that he's a smart football coach. And um, they not do they get the most out of that group. That group you can tell plays fast and. Um, there's an identity to how they want to play football, and, they, and they've been successful this year doing what they're doing. Um, from Kyle, Kyle is the same thing as at any other player. Go out, the re end of the day, um, Kyle relies back on what he's doing on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, which would be the fundamentals. And when his number's called, if, his, if he's one in the progression, the ball dictates the ball goes there, great. Um, if not, Kyle will work to work his route and wherever he ends up in the coverage, the ball dictates it goes to him, awesome. But you know, it's been the same for each player. Go out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, compete, stick to your fundamentals, and Sunday, uh, hopefully, is a byproduct of how you practice, and hopefully, you practice well. Thanks, everybody. No. Thanks, Coach.